Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a deck built around one of my favorite cards in Standard, Arcane Bombardment. The 6-mana Mythic or Enchantment says whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, exile an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard, and then copy each card exiled with Arcane Bombardment, and you may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana costs. So very slow enchantment that gets a while to get going, but in a control shell like this one, where our goal is just to survive until we get a bombardment out, it can be a very effective way to completely take over a game. Of course, being an enchantment that costs 6 mana means it's quite vulnerable to cards like Invoke Despair, which may let us sacrifice our enchantment, but that's why we're also playing 4 copies of Pilfer in our deck as a 2 mana sorcery, get to take a look at the opponent's hand and choose a non-land card from it to make them discard it, so an early Pilfer can check for any answers to Arcane Bombardment, as well as maybe disrupt the opponent's curve, take away cards we cannot answer otherwise, and then the rest of our deck is filled with a bunch of spot removal, we've got some sweepers as well against other creatures' strategies, and eventually how do we plan to win the game? While we don't have any creatures in the main deck, we do have three copies of Burn Down the House, which can not only deal five damage to each creature and each planeswalker, but also has the option to generate three 1-1 one -one devil tokens that when they die also deal one damage to any target. So eventually, once we take hold of the game, we'll exile a Burn Down the House with Arcane Bombardment, which will get us even more devil tokens whenever we cast our next instant or sorcery, even potentially at instant speed during the opponent's turn, can we trigger Arcane Bombardment an additional time, so that can generate a ton of value, and eventually the devil tokens will take over. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck. At one mana we've got two copies of Voltage Surge, just as a cheap removal spell to deal two damage to a creature or planeswalker, and we can also maybe generate some treasure tokens with big score, in which case this can deal four damage instead. If you feel like it, you could also replace Voltage Surge with a Play With Fire, so that could be an extra alternate win condition to just burn the opponent out with a couple burn spells, instead of only relying on Burnout House, but I think it's still useful to have a way to potentially deal 4 damage if it's relevant against cards like Haughty Jin, for instance, from the Mono Blue deck. You often want to be able to deal that 2 extra points of damage. Then at 2 mana, besides our 4 copies of Pilfer, we're also playing 2 copies of a Braid to deal 3 damage or destroy an artifact. So the flexibility again is quite useful, since early on you might use it to deal 3 damage to a creature, but then later if you exile it with Arcane Bombardment, you might be better off destroying an artifact with it instead, so you constantly get the choice between the two modes. And then 3 copies of Go for the Throat as a nice efficient removal spell to destroy non-artifact creatures, but of course it's also mixed with other removal spells that may be able to hit artifacts instead. So having a wide variety of removal spells is important, especially if the game drags on and we start exiling things with bombardment, we want to be able to answer whatever our opponent presents next. Then at 3 mana we've got a few sweepers with Brotherhood's End to deal 3 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. We of course don't have any planeswalkers in the deck ourselves, so it can be very useful against the more controlling strategies that rely on planeswalkers as their win conditions. But we can also destroy all artifacts with mana value 3 or less, so we'll take care of any treasure tokens, blood tokens, maybe even Reckoner Bankbusters that the opponent may have. And then we also have two copies of Dire Strain Rampage, which is an incredibly flexible card, can take out an opposing artifact or enchantment, in which case the opponent does get to search for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped, so that part's not great, but we can also destroy opposing lands with it, in which case the opponent gets to search two basic lands to put on the battlefield tapped, but eventually they'll run out of basic lands, in which case Rampage becomes this repeatable land destruction spell, especially if we exile it with Arcane Bombardment, can also be flashed back for five mana, although typically it's better to leave it in the grave yard, so we can eventually get it back with Bombardment. And of course we can also use a Rampage on our own land, so on turn 3 if we just want to ramp, destroy our own land, get 2 basics in return, and then we'll have access to 5 mana on turn 4, so that can also be a neat application of Rampage. And then 3 copies of a Riveteer's Charm, yet another modal card here, which is kind of a common theme in this deck, can make the opponent sacrifice their largest creature or planeswalker, can also exile the top 3 cards of our library, and until our next end step we may play those cards, so typically if we want to cast Riveteer's Charm for the second mode, it's better to cast it during the opponent's turn, that way we have a full turn as we untap to cast all those spells from exile, maybe play a land as well, because if we cast Riveteer's Charm in our main phase with the second mode, we may not have a ton of mana left to cast all those spells, and not get the most out of it, so it's also better to wait as long as possible during the game to cast the second mode on Charm, so we're more likely to maybe exile a Bombardment and be able to cast it, since it can be pretty awkward if we cannot. And then the final mode is to exile target player's graveyard, doesn't come 
come up very often, but especially once we get it back with Bombardment, it can be useful against, let's say, a deck like Mono Blue, where we can shrink down Haughty Chin, make it harder for the opponent to cast Tolarian Terror if we already dealt with all the creatures in play. And then at 4 mana we've got the full set of Big Score, which is one of the best cards to exile with Arcane Bombardment. Have to discard a card as an additional cost to draw to and make two treasure tokens, so that can help a ramp into Arcane Bombardment. And the fact that it's an instant also means we can maybe cast it during the opponent's turn to trigger Bombardment there as well, so we maybe trigger it twice in one turn cycle, otherwise it's limited to once per turn. And the two copies of Cartographer's Survey are another way to ramp by finding up to two lands among the top seven cards of our library. We're about 90% likely to find at least two lands with Survey, so it's a pretty consistent way of ramping into our bombardment. And then Unleash the Inferno is also pretty fun, especially against opposing copies of Wedding Announcement or Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which are pretty popular and standard. Can take out a creature and then if we deal excess damage, maybe take out an opposing artifact or enchantment as well. Can also be a nice answer to shield it at five toughness and then still maybe take out a Reckoner Bankbuster alongside it. And then our three copies of Burnout House, an important sweeper, but also our eventual win condition. And then a full set of Arcane Bombardment, typically don't mind having two copies active at the same time, but can also maybe play an extra copy to protect from an opposing Invoke Despair, making us sacrifice an enchantment. Now one card I would have liked to add to the deck is a way to maybe gain some life, so we can stabilize against the more aggressive decks and eventually repeatedly gain life. I considered Titania's Command, so I could see a world where we maybe cut an Arcane Bombardment, add an extra Titania's Command, or try and find Find room for one copy, since that can exile an opposing graveyard and gain a bunch of life. It's not necessarily a repeatable source of life gain, since the opponent's eventually going to run out of cards. So if we see a cheap instant or sorcery in the Junt Callers in future expansions that gains life and maybe provides a bit of extra utility, I would certainly consider adding it to this deck. In previous iterations of this deck, I ran cards like Cramp Session, which allowed us to gain for life and maybe learn for a sideboard card. That would be the perfect fit for a deck like this. So if that's the type of card I would be looking to add. And then our mana base needs to have quite a few basic lands in case we target our own land with Dire Strain Rampage. We don't want to run out of basic lands to search up. So we've got four swamps, four mountains, two forests. And these will also come into play untapped on turn two, since most of the other lands don't. And then, of course, a Proving Ground, another important piece of mana fixing that can also be cycled late into the game. I also considered adding a copy of Argoth in the mana base as maybe an extra win condition, although it is pretty pricey to activate in terms of green mana. And of course, no green legendary creature to go with it. And then and it also mills a bunch of cards, which could be risky, since our deck does tend to draw a lot of cards, so we wouldn't be able to activate it too many times. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Lots of cheap interaction. Can get to the mid to late game, hopefully, where we can set up our bombardment. Facing turn one Swiss Pierce, so that's a scary start. Turn to Impulse. So no second threat, finds a lightning strike. So I could pilfer to have a look, maybe take away a mechanized warfare, since we won't be able to answer it once in play. And then uh, kind of take it from there. Okay, opponent has another impulse, which I'll take, and then double rending flame, which we don't care about at all. So, yeah, we're not in a bad spot after seeing their hand. Take a bit of damage of Swiss Spear, but we can take it out with an Abrade, keep, go for the throat for later. And then I should probably wait in case they play another creature that's carrier. Lots of attack. They could punish me with two instant speed spells to grow Swiss Spear. Seems unlikely though. Swiss Spear down. And then now we just need to find something like a big score to eventually set up our bombardment. There's a warfare. I have a couple ways to destroy enchantments in the deck. For now I don't hate make devils, although the problem is a rending flame can start taking them out. So maybe I do just end up uh, cycling proving ground here. Adversary was the unknown card, and that's a pretty good one, since it can get back a Lightning Strike for 4 damage now. Or goes for Impulse instead. Okay, so going for card advantage. Which also makes sense. 
Mishra's Foundry and a Chandra Address to Kill. Chandra we can take out with Burn Down the House at least. And we can kill Adversary. Still Cycle Proving Ground. But we'll have some trouble with Mishra's Foundry since it doesn't die to go for the throat. Although Arcane Bombardment, best top deck possible here. Opponent plays Chandra, Foundry, we play Burn Down the House. And then hopefully hit like a Pilfer to snipe something out of their hands. And then we would love to find some card draw, whether it's Rivatir's Charm or a uh, big score. Chandra finds Impulse and a Kumano. That's two more damage here. All right, opponent's got some good tools to work with. Impulse finds backup Chandra. So I think I still burn down the house here to enable bombardments. And could also opt for Devils, but they wouldn't be enough to kill Chandra necessarily. So I think we just wipe the board. Next turn, if they play Chandra, they're not playing a creature for Kumano. They can still hit me with Foundry for three, so that hurts. What's the alternative? Lataman tap with Chandra, which is gonna plus for card advantage. I could just keep some Devils back on defense, I suppose. Which they can try and kill with Rending Flame. Yeah, maybe just making Devils is better when they have a backup Chandra. And then we hit an Abrade, which doesn't do much at the moment. But it means that if I cast Go for the Throats, I'll get a free Abrade guaranteed. So that can hit the Mishra's Foundry. So now do I go after Chandra? I guess it doesn't hurt to send one token. Chandra exiles the top card, finds another Kumano, not a bad hit, and a Monastery Swiss Pier. Okay, I'm kind of hoping they turn on Mishra's Foundry here, but I doubt it. Another Kumano triggers Swiss Pier. Gonna kill it with a Go for the Throat anyway. So they can turn on Foundry and still use a Rending Flame on one of my tokens. They're just gonna send Swiss Spear instead. So in that case, they just jump with the uh, Devil. Also have to keep in mind that Kumano, once it transforms, means it exiles their creatures, so they no longer deal one damage when they die. So I wanna save my instant speed, go for the throats to set up a braid, I think. So I'll jump here, deal one to Chandra. Opponent's probably gonna play a backup. Okay. And then they'll still have a running flame to take out one devil token. And now Chandra deals two damage. Let's bring things up to a simmer. Okay. Another burn down the house I'll take. So make more devils, I guess, is the objective. Get a free Abrade to target Swiss Spear. Although now go for the Throats is a better solution. Sadly, Abrade cannot target Planeswalkers. Now we're still in trouble if our opponent finds more burn spells. But for now we can send four Devils at Chandra, and no matter what, Chandra's gonna die even if they Rending Flame. I guess they can turn on Mishra's Foundry. Okay, so I can either kill Foundry or kill Chandra. And I think we kill Chandra, so we don't have the awkwardness of having to kill my own Devil token to take out Chandra here. And with a go for the throat, getting back a braid, we can kill the Foundry at any point. So hopefully they turn on Mishra's Foundry, perfect. So now we can kill both. And hopefully Exile burn down the house in the process. Opponent tries to 
remove our token, so we want to kill etching and response, so we at least get our one damage as opposed to getting exiled. And then our graveyard is two burnout house, one pilfer, so pretty likely to hit a burnout house. And yeah, a braid destroys an artifact. Go for the throat etching. And burn down a house can make more devils. So clean things up nicely. Points go to one unknown in hand. And we can cast another burn down the house here in a second. To make at least six devils. And a pilfer to boot. Okay. Pilfer is probably the safest move to begin with. Oh no, another lightning strike going upstairs. That's four damage. But we hit another burn down the house. So that's six more doubles. Get the running flame. Although, let's see, we can hit for 12. And then burn down the house can just destroy all my creatures. And that's another 12 damage. Okay, I guess that does it. Sweet, so incredibly close game against Monored. Opponent had a lot of card advantage with Reckless Impulse, but we got very lucky to find Bombardment when we did, and then Triple Burnout the House also did a ton of work here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems decent. Creature removal and hand disruption. And then some powerful 4-mana plays up against Mono Blue, so it could be the Hot Agent Counterspell deck. Which is not our favorite matchup. So how do we sequence our spells? If I play Pilfer now, it most likely gets countered. So I could wait until maybe turn 4 to double spell 2 drops, especially if they do have a Hot Agent with protection. So I think I just chill for now, could keep up Go for the Throat, just in case they do tap out for Hot Agent, although I doubt it. And then next turn play tap land. Opponent with a consider. To maybe hit their land drop. And uh, Riveteer's Charm also nice. A removal spell. But we have to play Proving Ground now. Wanna try and waste their mana since they don't seem to have any cantrips. Main phase Thirst is telling. So now we can try and resolve maybe a survey to give us more mana to work with. Hope they don't have a spell pierce. Okay, so they could still easily have a spell pierce, but I think I still go for it. Alright, that worked. Hit two lanes. So now we've got a nice man advantage. It's going to be easier to play around the conditional counter spells. And we have a bunch of decent answers to the opponent's creatures. Okay, so how do we sequence here? I could play another survey, make even more mana. See if they want to negate that. If they do, I still have Go for the Throat available. I think I want to make sure Pilfer resolves. So I don't necessarily want to have that negated. I could Go for the Throat. If they counter, I can still Pilfer and Riveteer's Charm. That's also pretty good. Alright, so maybe start with a... Go for the throat then. Riveteer's Charm is a better answer to Tolarian Terror, so we don't have to pay the ward cost, but we also have Burn Down the House. Alright, opponent's gonna slip out the back. So I think now we Riveteer's Charm, make them sacrifice. Could also exile their graveyard, which is an interesting mode in this matchup, but uh, I think we still deal with the creature for now. And then now we can pilfer and take their best card, maybe a flow of knowledge if they're playing it. Double Tolarian Terror, Essence Scatter we don't care about, Make Disappear we can play around pretty easily, Fading Hope's also not great, so yeah, take a Terror, and now we know what we're up against. So opponent has one, two, three, four, five instants and sorceries, so our opponents could play Tolarian Terror for two mana here. Alright, opponent found another Haughty Djinn instead, they can also... Fading Hope, that one, to save it. So now our Cane Bombardment gets countered by Make Disappear. So we just want to build up more mana with Survey, I think. If 
found two lanes. We're about 90% likely to hit two lanes with survey, but uh, yeah, sometimes you can get unlucky. Opponent found an impulse, so yeah, if they can find a negate, we could still be in trouble. But we have some good tools in hand. And once Bombardment is in play, it can take over very easily. So two mana left. So if I burn down the house, we can easily pay for four mana even if they sack a creature. So their response is probably to bounce their own creature unless they found a negate. Next turn, I am unlikely to take lethal. So I could try and set up Bombardment first. And then big score, even if it gets countered, would at least trigger bombardments. So I think we try that. Opponent has the impulse. And bombardment resolves. Now if I want to cast big score, I'll have to discard Burnout House, which we probably don't want to do. So we'll pass. And then next turn, try for burn. Fading hope their own tolerance error. Okay, that works, I guess. I see, maybe your opponent was hoping to counter their own fading hope with Make Disappear to put two additional spells in the graveyard, and that would have presented lethal here, but I guess uh, something went wrong and we actually dodged a bullet. Okay, step one, burn out the house. And, uh, yeah, hope that works. Keep land in hand to discard to big score. And I go for the throat for good measure, take out Haughty Jin. So we're in trouble if they have another slip out the back. Although now we can big score to cast an instant speed go for the throat. Okay, we cleared the board. That feels like a huge win. And then I'm not in a rush to cast big score. Can wait until my turn so we don't get it countered by Make Disappear. A braid as well. So a braid represents another go for the throat. But uh, let's big score now to see if we can maybe find some more action main phase. And our opponent explodes. Wow, very close game here against Mono Blue. And yeah, that Fading Hope play might have cost him. But uh, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, our hand's got some good early removal, so hopefully we're up against a creature deck. Wouldn't be able to go for the throat on two, but we'll have a voltage surge we can cast at least. Turn one mountain phoenix chick, alright, so voltage surge will certainly come in handy. And uh, sure, we can keep up go for the throat. Now, sequencing or removal is going to be tricky, and seeing Mishra's Foundry makes me want to keep Voltage Surge to answer that. Now, of course, we could just take a bunch of damage, wait until Burn Out the House, but taking two this early from Adversary is probably not acceptable. So let's take out Adversary now. Hope they don't have any scary three drops like a Reckless Storm Seeker, which we won't be able to Voltage Surge now. But our deck can really struggle with Mishra's Foundry. So I'm going to try and hang on to Voltage Surge if possible. All right, Felden, I might also want to kill with Voltage Surge. Or I can take three, next turn another three, and turn after, burn out the house. So I'll be at at least 12. And then Felden gets to dig pretty deep if we deal five damage to it. So that's not ideal. Could also end up making Devil Tokens with burn out the house to present a blocker for Foundry. All right, fine, we'll kill Felden. So sequencing now would have worked out much better the other way around. If we go for the third Felden, doesn't provide any extra card advantage. An opponent found Squee, although goes for a Phoenix Chick right now. Okay, so just tap land pass. And then hope they present more creatures that die to burn out the house, pretty much. Opponent goes digging, finds Swiss Spear and Phoenix Chick. 
Okay, so it's going to be an effective burnout house at least. Take four. And then next turn, bombardment, and then we just need a follow-up. Although I'm still worried about that Mishra's Foundry. Swiss Spear, activate Foundry, alright. Take three. And the Brotherhood's End's not bad, but let's get this bombardment going first. And then hope to hit Burn Out the House as soon as possible. So, can definitely expect them to have a lightning strike in hand, which they may fire off now. Yep. So we're at a precarious 3 life, dead to another lightning strike. And, uh, yeah. I could cycle this proving ground first in case we find some instant speed interaction. Go for the throats. So that hits Swiss Spear, does not hit Foundry. But if I cast it in the opponent's turn, there's a chance I hit Voltage Surge, which can kill the Foundry, and Burnout House would be a great hit as well. So I think Go for the Throat is the way to go. But not expecting to survive here. Mechanized Warfare triggers Swiss Spear. Yeah, so now a 2 damage burn spell is lethal. Well, better hit our uh, Burnout the House. But opponent had a play with fire. So I'm pretty sad since we never get to find out what we would have exiled with Bombardment here. But uh, anyways, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And our hand seems decent. Turn to Pilfer. Unleash to hopefully catch back up. Could be a little slow against Aggro, admittedly. So might need a sweeper there. But it looks like a more controlling deck. Might be Grixis, in which case this is a great answer to Fable of the Mirror Breaker, even though... Being on the play would make this much better. Okay, let's have a look with Pilfer. Or we can wait in case your opponent's holding up uh, Make Disappear. And then cast it when the coast is clear. Can maybe end of turn kill a Shaman token from Fable. Alright, still nothing. In that case, I think I hold Pilfer until the turn before we Arcane Bombardment. To make sure they don't have a counter for it. Since we can kill Shieldred with Unleash if that shows up. Still nothing. They could of course have an Invoke Despair, which may be worth taking. Uh, since that also answers Bombardment, and now at least Pilfer won't be able to be countered by Make Disappear. And yeah, they had Make Disappear in hand, and Invoke, missing red for Corpse Appraiser. So that card's going to be annoying, but I guess we won't present many creatures for it. So definitely take Invoke Despair, leaving them with Make Despair, which we can play around. And uh, Double Appraiser, which they currently cannot cast. And now we've got a backup Bombardment. So yeah, all things considered, we're not in a bad spot. So we can force through a Bombardment, get it countered, and next turn try again. Or we can wait for them to tap that blue mana, which is going to happen at some point. And then maybe uh, cycle Proving Ground, since I don't need more than 6 mana, unless we want to get up to 8 mana to just pay for the Make Disappear. So we have options. I guess more mana is not a bad thing in this deck, so I'll just play this tapped and pass. Since we're playing a waiting game here. Another Brotherhood's End, not too useful. Problem now is if they have another Invoke Despair in hand. So that's another reason to maybe wait on Bombardment until we can trigger it in the same turn to at least get a little bit of value. Bankbuster we can take out with Brotherhood's End. Or we can resolve a Bombardment while we're at it. So yeah, interesting spot. If I let them untap with Bankbuster, they get to draw a second time. So if I Bombardment and they had a... Invoke Despair in hand, they get to draw. Next turn, Invoke Despair. And then we get to Bombardment with a land, also Brotherhood's End, killing Bankbuster and triggering it. Yeah, interesting spot. I think we still Bombardment here. Since then, next turn, Brotherhood's End can enable it and get back Pilfer. Okay, 
Okay, so invoke the spares, what we don't want to see. Opponent has to discard, go for the throw to hand size, and yeah, now we can Brotherhood's End and uh, destroy all artifacts with Mana Valley 3 or less. Get back Pilfer for a nice discard spell. And then now every next spell will get back Pilfer. Ooh, a lot of red cards. Double Wandering Mind, Harvester, double Corpse Appraiser. So I'll grab a Corpse Appraiser, I think. And then probably keep Land in Hand for big score, if we find it. They did not draw with Bankbuster. That must have been a mistake. Okay, I'll we'll pass. And uh, Rampage can hit my own land as well. Definitely don't want to give the opponent a basic mountain if they're running it. So let's Rampage. Probably should have hit Scarpluzum Forest at this point. And then Pilfer again. Grab another Corpse Appraiser. And now an instant speed Voltage Surge, killing a Wandering Mind or Harvester, gets back another discard spell. And then probably no need to play another Bombardment here. Okay, so now I could Bombardment and then Rampage. Opponent can't have too many more basics left, so maybe giving them red mana temporarily is fine. Although of course they can make this appear now, so I guess we just pass. And then next turn go after their lands. Opponent passes, another pilfer. This is getting pretty brutal. So I think step one rampage. And go after the dual lands. And does our opponent have Basic Mountain? They probably have at least one. They have two, in fact. Have a look. And uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker we can grab, although Unleash is a nice answer to it. So I think Wandering Mind as a card that provides immediate card advantage. Okay, opponent's got three mountains, gets an island, so no need to flash back Rampage just yet. We'll keep it in the graveyard for next turn, and for now just pass. Opponent finally gets to cast our red spells, thanks to our help, so we're being good Samaritans here. And then in response to the Harvester trigger, I'll Voltage Surge before they can cast Wandering Mind. And get some more value. Double Rampage. Let's get that uh, blue mana out of here. They've got two more islands. So they've got a lot more basics than your average Grixis deck. Otherwise they would have been out already at this point. Two more mountains. And this can deal 3 damage. And then Pilfer can grab Wandering Minds. Opponent can still play Harvester, that's fine. And then Unleash the Inferno gets rid of Harvester and Fable. And yeah, this is pretty mean. Opponent doesn't have the mana to cast Make Disappear to sacrifice their Harvester. Otherwise they could have fizzled the Destroy Enchantment part of our removal spell. Okay, opponent's out of islands it seems. Opponent 
Pilfer take their counterspell. And Brotherhood's End to destroy their blood tokens. So really taking everything from them. Okay, I'll hang on to Survey for next turn. Opponent still hanging in there, I can respect it. Start going after the red mana since they have more swamps. And they can't have too many more basics left. Well, they're proving me wrong. Okay, we did it. Our opponent's out of basics. So we're going for the perfect victory. At some point we'll find our burn down the house to take over. For now we'll just pass. Cycle Proving Ground. Opponent can still cast a uh, Invoke Despair if they drew it. Harvester is fine. And Riveteer's Charm for card advantage is excellent, so let's cast that. Survey for ramp, unleash, kill, harvester and blood token, a rampage, go after their mana. Well, this has been a very unique game. Don't get to torture an opponent for this long, usually. Blood token down. And we're starting to run out of lands and library. And there's a big score, that's what we needed. Oops, probably should have cast big score. Forgot uh, it goes away end of turn. Put a stop on the opponent's upkeep, so I could have maybe made them discard in their draw step, but uh, that was a mistake. That's okay. Riveteer's Charm, I'll cast at instant speed. For now we can pilfer. And then do I exile their graveyard or top three? Let's go with top three. And there's our burn out the house finally. Corpse appraiser. It's not getting cast. I don't have to cast survey if I'm afraid of running out of cards. Okay, let's burn out the house, make some devils, and start to beat down. And then now I could put a draw step stop with a second Riveteer's Charm. Just in case they uh, found something like an Invoke Despair. So make more devils. Exalt top three. Pilfer. And decline. Just a land. Okay, 19 cards left. Do want to keep an eye on that. And then take out a couple more lands. And finally, our opponent throws in the towel. Oof, what a game. All respect to our opponent here for sticking with it. Most Grixis decks only have three or four basic lands, so the fact that they had that many meant they could actually withstand our Rampage a lot longer, but eventually would have taken out all of their lands, and then the Devil Tokens can easily cross the finish line. 
So yeah, that's what our deck is capable of if it gets the chance to completely go off. But you need to dodge some key cards, Invoke Despair being one of them. So those main deck pilfers are very important. If you were playing this in a best of three environment, you could add Duress to that list as another way to take away those key cards. But against a deck like Blue-White Soldiers, which is quite popular in best of one, a card like Duress is going to be a dead card, which is why I did not include it in the main deck. But our many sweeper effects, of course, can be great in that matchup. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.